about. This is a post-mortem. And it doesn't really mean somebody died. <laughs> uh, if you're familiar with project management, you know, it's very common at the end of a project uh, to give a post-mortem. You know, basically says, you know, did we meet our objective? What did we do well? Where work we improve, et cetera. I gave one very similar to this last year. This year's going to go much quicker. Uh, because, frankly, a lot of the things we suggested last year, we actually did implement this year. Some of the things we suggested last year, we did not implement this year. Some of the things we suggested last year, we implemented this year poorly. So let's, let's go through some of those and, and we'll all get on the same page. This is my, uh, if you ever go to a vendor uh, and you watch a presentation, they always give uh, some sort of safe harbor statement. You know, the things you're gonna see may involve future blah, 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 that we don't guarantee anything. So. This is my safe harbor statement I think we should use for every field day discussion. Uh, I used this last year. I liked it so much because I wrote it. I used it again this year. But I think that this is, uh, I think this is always pertinent. And frankly, this, this goes really for almost any discussion we have on how to improve our club. Uh, this really doesn't just apply to field day. This really can apply to almost anything. Recognizing, you know, no one held a gun to our head to join this club. Uh, you know, we're all here uh, for an event like field day or a, or a race or, you know, any kind of event. You know, we volunteer for this. You know, we volunteer for things. And that's, that's our nature, that's our heart, that's our spirit. So keep that in mind when we, when we talk about how to make any event better, not just field day. Uh, in this case, you know, we all want a successful event regardless of what it is. And we, wanted, we want uh, field day to be successful. But the challenge with that, just like almost any event, is people have different ideas of what they think success is. You know, is it making the most use of? Uh, is it having everybody that wants to operate, operate? Is it, you know, drinking all the coffee and eating all the chicken? Uh, so there are many benchmarks to success. Um, and we all might measure success differently because we all have a different paradigm of what we think uh, maybe a field day should be. I got 19 minutes left, no problem. I'm going to go through the. Oh, I'm good. You watch this. I'm gonna, here, but here's. This is the model that I came up with last year based on your input. And you guys have probably seen this and you're bored with it. But to me, this is the nuance of the components that go into a field day. Uh, and we've talked about these. And these are the, what I call the areas of responsibility. And I think I like to think of field day right now as being kind of like field day in a drum. You know, I think if anything happens to any of us, we can almost agree on this framework and, and look at how we can do future field days. Because no matter what happens in field day, it kind of takes this. You know, there might be little subtleties here and there. But when you get down to the framework of a field day, this is the framework. So when I sent out, uh, I solicited feedback. I was hoping people would, would drop a few comments in some of these areas. So I'm going to go through some of these areas right now quickly uh, and tell you where I received comments, where I didn't, what some of the comments were, what some of the thoughts are. Chairman, nobody said, Bob, you stink. So I view that as half successful. Uh, <laughs> so there, I really did, but honestly, I didn't receive uh, you know, any real any feedback other than thank you and, you know, whatever, great job, whatever. Uh, volunteer communications, nobody talked about that. I would like to, though, uh, for the field day uh, subcommittee folks, the people that had these different areas of responsibilities, I would like to, after this meeting, uh, if you could email me and tell me what your thoughts are about the emails that, and the way we approached it with with you all sort of owning your area of responsibility. I'd love to hear feedback on that. Nobody really gave me feedback on the framework. Uh, also, for the volunteer, for the people who are in, are in this room, uh, don't be afraid to send me an email also and just tell me what did you think about the email traffic for field day? Was it less than other years? Was it more than other years? Did you feel it was appropriate? Did you have any, any difficulty volunteering uh, to work in a certain area other than operating, and we're going to talk about that. Uh, facilities, tables, chairs, shelters. By and large, people liked having it there again. Uh, some people have an issue with having it there. They think, well, we should wait closer to field day to discuss where we have it. 
The challenge with that is, and Larry is quick to point this out, because this year we lost that venue, and the only reason we got in it was the wedding that was booked on the weekend we wanted to do field day was canceled because they needed a bigger venue. So I can tell you, I am going to put in a reservation now for next year at that location. Now, before you stone me or throw old transceivers at me, we can always cancel it. But I want to put it in so we have a venue. Now, for all of you that are so hogtied in a twist about having it somewhere else, fine. Tell us where. Because until I find somewhere else that's every bit as good as where we just had it, it's going to be where it is, unless the membership feels differently. And I'm totally cool with you guys giving me a suggestion. But I got to tell you guys, it is extremely hard to find somewhere in this town for field day. It's real easy to sit back and say, oh, we should have it somewhere else. No problem. Tell us where you want it. <laughs> Line it up. Make sure it works. I'm happy to cancel our reservation and have it there. But I can tell you, it's really hard to get in to the Earliesville Volunteer Fire Company. We are right there in the middle of wedding season. And you need to reserve it now. I'll reserve it now. Don't let anybody get mad. I can cancel it almost any time we need to cancel it. But you've got literally about four months to find another spot, in my opinion. Sounds a little hardball. But you know, I probably had three emails from people saying, "Where are we over there?" Fine, find a spot. Tell me where it is. It's a magic spot. I do think the facilities are good there. We didn't have to worry about. We had an issue with the tables because they needed the tables back an hour before our event ended. But fortunately, Larry went up and took care of that, and we had no problems with our tables. Thank you, Steve. Where you at, Steve? Steve, thank you for the tables. Also, thank you for the killer safety vests and all the other work you did, the signage. That was great, and that all ties in with the facilities. Publicity, Paul, and every yes. I got to give kudos to whoever came up with the idea of putting those tarps over that show. The tarps were from last year. It was a suggestion. Uh, everybody that helped put up the tarp or went and bought a tarp, raise your hand, because thank you very much. That made a huge difference, contrary to two people that claimed there wasn't any difference between the one tent and the other. So, um, but yeah, the tarps made a, made a big difference. That was great. And uh, they did help a lot. Also, who, who, brought, who brought those really good fans? <laughs> who, brought, who bought those? Uh, Joe, do you know who brought them? Which the, the, the little so blower little units we had. Yeah. You mean the box fans? No, those the... little ones that looked like uh, oh, carpet yeah, dryers. You brought those? Those were great. So the facilities were good. Suggestions were relocating the welcome tent. Other suggestions were having the operators even more spread out because there are some people when they're on the radio speak very loudly. I know people like that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and then, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make a QSO, and all I hear is Dennis over there, you know, hitting his, you know, hitting his paddles, and those paddles are just drowning out. I can't hear uh, my buddy in Alaska. By the way, to Alaska and Hawaii. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but um, publicity, I'm going to move real quick to publicity. Great job. Great job. We got many, many, many points for publicity. Daily Progress, front page of the Sunday paper. CBS 19 was there on Saturday, did a spot on it. NBC 29 was there on Sunday, did a spot on it. WINA, two different occurrences through WINA with uh, uh, Schilling with uh, John Porter. Good job. And uh, call in on Monday with Vicki. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> and then Z95, Les Sinclair with our very own Michael. So uh, publicity was very good. Uh, we had a decent turnout. It's hard in any venue. Here's another thought about the venue. You guys think I'm really preaching on having it there. But here's another thought. The more you move it around, the more people have to find us. If you have that event at a different place every year, every year, the public's looking for us. If you stay put and have it in one spot as long as you can, I believe it's going to work and people are going to get acclimated and understand. I know about what time of year it is and I know it's going to be over here. It's just food for thought. And they have bathrooms. And they have bathrooms. And ice. Uh, real bathrooms. Real bathroom. And real ice. <laughs> okay. Um,
spending, operator scheduling. I'm going to spend, well, let me go through the everything else first, and then I'll get the operator scheduling, because that was the biggest uh, negative comments we had. Safety. Safety was great. Had zero incidents. We had a safety officer on duty at all times, and the uh, checklist was adhered to. My only comment on safety is putting up the push-up was spiritual this year. Paul? You feeling it? <laughs> that, that was, and that was maybe my fault because I didn't have the ladder, but still, it was really, really difficult putting up that. That push up to me was a dangerous situation. When, you know, whenever you are doing something and you think to yourself, should I be doing this? You know, that's usually a tip. Um, Goda was very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Excellent job with Goda. Uh, you guys killed it. Very happy with the Goda situation. Uh, you had a new tent as did the welcome, had a new tent. Uh, the, the feedback on the new tents were very positive uh, overall. Uh, Goda had a good, good, uh, good showing. Uh, you had 57 total QSOs, is that right? Between, you had 17 non-amateurs and 40 amateurs. So that, uh, that, that was, was the count you gave those me. Those were individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who signed up. Oh, gotcha. Ah, those were the sign-ups? They weren't those were the sign-ups. They were not, you also okay. got the go to law. Right, okay. And the suggestions for GOTA was certificates for all the position, all the position, or all the operate, everybody who operated gets a certificate. Other suggestions for GOTA was uh, uh, test the radio first for, for noise, make sure it's a, a good solid radio. Uh, dedicated antenna to GOTA only, never to be switched. Uh, the other one was, uh, that was probably me, my, 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 it went to sleep, sleep. Hold on, hold on a second. Maybe you're spending too much time. Well, I'm going to spend time on the, I'm going to spend time on the important stuff. I, I'm, I, I started at 710, right? Okay. Go to. But Goda was very well. Uh, I, overall, it was very good. I think the big thing with Goda is really is just the antenna issue and the transceiver issue. So we're not bothering Goda, or the operators aren't bothering Goda, and Goda's not bothering the operators. Uh, another suggestion, uh, speaking of operators, I'm going to move on. Well, education, John did a great job with Morse code. We got our education points for that. Thank you very much, John Porter. Great job. Uh, so the education points were there. The uh, transceivers did really well. Thank you for bringing them. Uh, there was a point raised of, well, some people bring their own. How many transceivers should we really bring? Should we coordinate better what's brought? Uh, you know, Paul, you like your rig. I like my rig. I also like one of Jim's. I'm comforting one of his rigs. So better to have too many than not enough, but maybe we have to test our rigs to make sure nobody's splashing on anybody. Uh, which brings us to antennas. I do think the antennas were a little better this year. The club bought a new uh, off-center fed dipole that did really well. Uh, I did a little tweaking to my fan dipole. And again, we got the hex beam up again this year. Uh, so antennas were good, but antennas still need to be tested. And that was the one thing that a lot of people replied back to me is we've got to test, test, test this because, uh, and, and which brings up, uh, suggestions, multiple people, maybe we should set up on Friday, if anything, just to test the antennas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe the uh, solution might be put up the antennas on Friday, just set up a transceivers, you don't even need a tent if it's not raining. So we, we can talk about that next year, but the big deal is we got to test, or also a discussion was made of uh, uh, narrow filters so we can operate maybe two rigs on the same band. Mm -hmm. So. It's just a thought. Uh, yes? Uh, is there any comments on the use of the uh, bandpass filters for 40? Yeah, the, everybody, was, everybody liked the bandpass filters. They were, they were, that was a very positive comment. That's another thing we did last year. Generators, power distribution, nailed it. Ran the whole thing on one generator, literally, until we fired up a coffee pot. So one, e one, one Honda 2000 ran that entire show, guys. One Honda 2000 ran that whole show. Um, uh, you killed a great job with the uh, local area network and the PCs. Uh, you know, you stepped up, just nailed it. Okay, uh, invitations went out. Uh, we didn't have the greatest 
uh, attendance this year from some of the invitations, but that happens. People have lives, schedules happen, but they did go out and they went out with quality. One, Food? one respondent said he would be delighted to attend July 22nd and 23rd. <laughs> 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 okay, food and refreshments. The comments from food and refreshments, everybody loved it. We had one comment saying there was too much food. And, and do I really look like somebody who would ever comment that there was too much food? But no, Larry did a great job. The food and refreshments were outstanding. Uh, I'm just glossing over a lot of this because I want to spend the last few minutes talking about operator scheduling. I'm going to accept responsibility for that. Uh, I created a form for it that I thought was going to be sufficient. Uh, bounced it off Ed. I thought it was going to be fine. Uh, what had happened is, you know, you know, I was at scout camp the week before field day. I got home from scout camp. Uh, very late. Uh, it was about one in the morning when I went to bed. And when I woke up in the morning, I'd only had a few, really not much sleep at all. Uh, when I arrived at field day, uh, I'd realized that I had forgotten when I was at home waking up to print out the schedule for, uh, from my home laptop, to print out the schedule from Google Forms. So when I got there, I thought, I'll be okay, I'll do it on my phone. You guys saw me, I got the whiteboard out, and I made that whole whiteboard, and thank you, Steve, for bringing the whiteboard. And I made that whole whiteboard schedule. And I, all the problem is I was only going to see the top 12 people who responded. So I made two announcements, and I said, guys, I didn't get it all. Check the sign-up board. The only problem is the sign-up board, I had it up here, and then somebody would move the box it was on, and it's on the ground. And I'd pick it up. Bob, then I put it back down. Was the issue we had enough operators for certain? The, no, we never had not enough operators. The issue was we had people that signed up to operate that didn't go over to the sign up board and update it with when they were supposed to operate. Like I said, I made an announcement several times. I said, guys, if you signed up and you're not on here, you know, I'm missing people, please go ahead and sign in. Some people did sign up on the board. The board was there the entire event. But some people were upset they didn't get to operate when they signed up. The board was there. Wow, so <clears throat> there were about three people actually that said my, you know, but one of the three said I added my name. So okay, now we're going to go on to the QSA summary. <laughs> Is this the guy that told me to hurry? <laughs> You're killing me, Ed. <laughs> yeah, all somebody had to do was walk up and tap an operator on the shoulder. That's okay. The other thing with operator scheduling, um, uh, well, we, we're going to talk about the points now, and this is a good segue. Uh, and I'm missing a bunch because we're in a hurry. Um, this is a QSO summary. This is, Dennis, what you did last year. This is your format. I just combined the two of your tables and just put last year's in parentheses. To me, I have three takeaways from this. But if you see it in parentheses, that's last year. OK, first off, first takeaway, what's the obvious thing? Phone was way down, especially on 80. Uh, I was never even able to jump on. If you look here, well, 20, we, we, 20 was double last year. Look at 40. OK? No, I didn't mean to say 80. I meant to say on 20. Half of our QSOs. So you can see that our QSOs were way, way down. What was our saving grace? Well. So phone was way, way down, pretty much. The other thing I noticed is there's a much better balance of the bands. If you looked at what we did last year per band, uh, I'm sorry, if you look at this year per band, uh, there was a fairly decent balance there between 80, 40, and 20. Uh, as of, uh, if you compare it to the QSOs we had as a percentage, uh, you can see there was a much different percentage of QSOs compared to last year. Uh, per band. But the big thing to me, the third takeaway I have is digital, digital, digital. Uh, we, you know, digital uh, did really well. FT8 did really well. Uh, so in, in that respect, I think we did really, really well. So, you know, just my two cents, this is all going to be published online if you want to analyze it further. Band conditions uh, were lousy this year. Band conditions were not that good. Really quick. We should also point out that when 
physical front end, part of the reason why my phone was down is because we didn't have phone you were one down. Right. The, the, the other down. issue was who's locking on who and yeah. I almost think if we had a second digital station, when we take a phone down or just run two digitals, we'd have two digitals and a CW going. But to be honest with you, that's not a lot of fun, in my opinion. Um, these are what we said we could have done better last year. I think to a degree, we had the first A kit, that was there. The interference, I think, is a little better because of the filters we bought, but I think it could be improved more. Heat management, I think we took care of that. I feel really good about that. Operator scheduling, I fell short. Uh, antenna selection, we, we had better antennas, but we didn't have the selection, you know, we really didn't understand the logistics of the best way to choose who should be operating on what antenna when. Operator training, we mentioned that last year, we've touched on it this year. I think if people don't know how to do a QSO on field day, that's on their own. They should be able to go out and do that. I don't think I should be responsible for telling somebody where to click on a website to learn the exchange. Testing fell way short again this year. You know, we basically tested after we set up Saturday. We, we need to really focus on a testing day uh, where we can do that. Uh, furniture, I think we did improve a little bit on furniture, although we had the table snafu and we did tell people to bring their own chairs. Accessibility, we were much more accessible. Did not have to go through the ditch to get to our tent. The glare, Thank you, you did a great job of eliminating the glare on all the monitors. Public involvement, I think we did our best. I think we definitely got the word out with our publicity. Thoughts for next year, operator positioning, the same thought we have for the next year. Again, these are 2018, what we should have done this year. Uh, two headphones, we did that, people still love that, uh, slating our headsets. We talked about uh, dipoles last year, we bought a new antenna. Operator training, well there you are. Uh, more modes, we added digital. Uh, tarps under the tent roofs, did that. Uh, ceiling box fans, don't have ceiling fans, but we did have those fans that were really, really, really nice that you brought. Uh, improved accessibility, check, did that. Uh, more club gear, we added two new tents and the, the filters. And uh, large scale hydration and nobody ran out of water. That's it, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>